What's up everyone? I hope you're doing awesome. It's that time of year where people are wanting you to put together budgets for next year, right? It's the close of 2021 and they're asking you to forecast uh, what some anticipated costs for the following year are going to be. Um, one of the biggest questions you're going to get is what are, you, what are our utilities going to cost for the coming year? And I'm going to show you a couple quick ways that you can calculate um, some of the biggest demands, you know, electricity being one of them, um, how you can quickly calculate what your anticipated costs are going to be for the coming year. First and foremost, the, your best tool is going to be your public utility company. Chances are you have a web portal that you can log on and it'll provide you with historical data. Um, that is generally the best place to start. Again, these are estimates and forecasts, so you're going to want to put a little bit of a factor correction on there um, just to anticipate for rising costs and perhaps an increased time of use or uh, whatever it might be, but um, great place to start. If you're getting into a new space and somebody asks you, hey, we're looking at a new space, it has 400 amps, uh, can you tell me what our anticipated costs are going to be? Now. Uh, that is a little more simple and again these are estimates they're not going to be spot on but it's something that is pretty quick calculation that you can do uh, that will help you get very close and at least start creating that initial budget so let's get right into it. okay so as you can see here uh, it's, it's pretty simple um, you know I, I created a really simple sheet that says hey right here what is your total amperage so your total amperage is 400 amps in this particular example you're not actually going to use all 400 amps and you're not going to overload that circuit. So an easy way to estimate it is by assuming you're going to draw 80% of that capacity 80% of the time. So you're going to take 400 amps, multiply it by 80%, and which is that, that's going to give you 320 amps, and you're going to take out of that 320, you're going to multiply that by 80% again. And the reason you do that is because you're generally not going to have long sustained periods of time that you're drawing 80% uh, of the demand on a particular circuit for a few different reasons but for simplicity's sake um, you know this is this is a great estimate from there you're going to take your total amperage and convert it over to kilowatts there's several different calculators out there that can help you do this and there's a couple different ways you can configure this it's going to ask you when you're converting your amperage over to kilowatts your phasing, and it's also going to ask you the converted voltage. So for this example, I've used 240 volts. It's somewhere in the middle, right? I split 120 and 480, uh, depending on your your location. You know, you're going to want to put your exact, but I just split the difference for this example. Um, so I'm using 240 volts. Based on that information, the calculation gave me 95 kilowatts per hour. I can also tell you, based on historical data, that I on average pay approximately 38 cents per kilowatt hour. So from here you can see it's getting really simple. It's getting it's getting really simple and, and easy to explain. You can see that I take my total kilowatts, so that would be 95. I can now multiply that by my kilowatt hour, which is 38 cents, and I come up with $36.10 per hour if I were to operate at 80% of 80% of 400 amps. From there, uh, you can multiply it to uh, um, on a multitude of different factors. You, so in this example, I picked a, a simple number. Uh, I said we we're gonna be in the office for 10 hours a day, operating at this 80% of 80% capacity, uh, which gives me $360 per day. From there, you can tag in your average working days, right? The, if you're a 24 hours, 24 seven operation that runs every day of the month, right? You're gonna to wanna to adjust this. Uh, I just took a typical business case, so let's assume that this is a, the 400 amps isn't a, a ton of power, so chances are it's a kind of a light commercial space, and I'm just gonna assume that it's a it's an office space where they go Monday through Friday, so 20 working days per month. That's gonna give me a total of $7,220 per month uh, if I were to operate at this capacity, right? Again, from there, after you've multiplied your monthly costs, again, you can just add uh, to another factor of 12, right? 12 months, multiply your monthly rate times uh, 12 months or however many months you're gonna be occupying the space if it's seasonal, depending on where you're at. Um, and that's gonna give you a good projection for the year. So in this particular example, if I were to operate a panel that was 400 amps, 
uh, given all these conditions, it's going to cost me just shy of $90,000 per year uh, for my electrical costs. And if I were asked to prepare a budget for this, uh, this is what I would give them. Um, from there, they can plan accordingly. They can look at, you know, what are their biggest consumers of energy? Are they going to want to do any energy upgrades? And all of these types of planning and these budgetary sheets, uh, they do a couple different things. You can take this data and really do so much with it. You can plan your next capital expenditure. You can plan your energy savings. Uh, you can break it down and start dividing it into um, your square footage. So depending on your KPIs, this is really going to lend itself towards a lot of different things. You can start saying, okay, uh, well, how, how much is it going to be if we expand our space? What does that mean, our cost per square foot? You can really start to, to do a lot with this, whether it's planning your capital expenditures, your energy savings, determining what your biggest consumers of energy are. Additionally, you can really start to uh, hit a lot of your metrics. So if people want to know what's your cost per square foot, you could say, look, we're based on our building size, which is 10,000 square feet. It's 12 cents per square foot to operate. Um, if you wanted to know something else, well, what does that mean cost per person, right? Depending on uh, the number of computers that they have, workstations, whether it's a lab, a plant, whatever, whatever you have going on, you can start to divide it even further so that you know down to the individual what adding or taking away somebody should do in that respective space, right? You can start to continue to break this down further and you can start to divide it amongst a million different things, right? The sky's kind of the limit. Per person, per square foot, uh, per computer, per unit, right? How, however you want to break it down, you can you can segment it off into different sections. And if you really wanted to get granular with it, you could go into each respective area and start calculating the wattage that's consumed off of uh, whether it's your computer, electronic equipment, whether it's your package units, uh, whether it's your HVAC systems, whether it's certain lighting. So you really know which way to go. Um, and this opens up just a breadth of scenarios that you can start picking apart and help create additional budgets. So in this example, I said, let's say that there's a staff of 20. What would you do, right? You can say, oh, well, per person, it costs us $4,300 uh, per person to keep the lights on. So that respectively, you know, if you add more people, whether it's computers, uh, equipment, plant equipment, office equipment, technical equipment, whatever it might be, that they're gonna add that factor. And it might not be 100% accurate, but at least it's going to give you a gauge as to where you stand and what each person is consuming respectively. And so what's the point? Well, the point is, again, you need to know your job in numbers so that you can start to take useful data and do something about it. And the idea is cost reduction, why it's happening and how you're going to fix it and, and how you're going to combat these rising costs, whether it's changing things uh, during time of use where energy consumption is higher during the summer, during the winter, during the specific periods. What is it? What is the demand? Why is it happening? Is there anything you can do to mitigate these things? Can you improve the efficiency? Can you, uh, is it user error? Have you driven by your building at night and realized that 90% of the lights are still on? Can you go through and install motion detectors, uh, occupancy sensors, whether it's your HVAC, can you put that on a schedule so when people are not in the office, you let that thing sit idle. You can satisfy uh, a lot of different things, but you know, by and large, um, knowing your job in numbers and curbing your electrical costs, which in my experience uh, has always been the largest contributor to utility expense. Um, it, it, beats, it outpaces gas, it outpaces water, it outpaces trash. Um, Electricity, by and large, is the number one most expensive thing um, that you have to deal with. So getting a good grasp um, on these things uh, is only going to help help you and your team uh, reduce costs and save that money or spend it in a more useful place. I would much rather take $40,000 and employ a part-time individual or buy a better piece of equipment, right? It's easy to build your return on investment case once you have this information. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I know it's something that I've recently been doing. Uh, I'm sure you're going to be asked to do it in the near future. And please like, subscribe, share, and as always, be great.